Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our playlist called Labs. In previous videos, we talked about urine catecholamines, urine chloride, microalbuminuria, microglobulinuria, such as the beta-2 microglobulins. We talked about urine nitrites, urine leukocyte estrase, urine osmolality, and the urine osmolar gap. We even talked about Benz Jones proteins, urine electrophoresis, urine specific gravity, and much more. Today we're talking about the topic of serum creatinine and how it can help us big time determine whether your kidney function is robust or not. Serum creatinine depends on your muscle mass and your age. When I say serum creatinine, I mean serum creatinine concentration. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. Before watching this video, please check out these videos first. Creatinine is a product of creatine phosphate metabolism. Where did creatine phosphate come from? From muscles. Now you have creatinine in your blood. This creatinine will be filtered through the kidney, which means it will leave the blood and go to the nephron of the kidney. This is called filtration. After this, what's going to happen? Will you reabsorb your creatinine back to the blood? No, creatinine is waste. I should not reabsorb it back. What do you do with it? I excrete it and it's partially secreted, which means the peritubular capillaries that are here will dump more creatinine onto the nephron or onto the kidney tubules. When you go from peritubular capillary to nephrons, it's called secretion. Okay, medicose is partially secreted by how much? About 5 to 10%. Let's say 10%. That's why creatinine clearance overestimates the glomerular filtration rate by about 10%. Which means if this creatinine that has been filtered represents 1x, then my creatinine in the urine is about 1.1x. Why is that? That's the 10% that got extra secreted. Do you remember the FIC principle? If I gave you a test tube containing three liters of water, each liter has two grams of salt. How much salt is in the entire sample? Easy. Two times three equals six grams. How did you do it? Amount equals volume times concentration. Therefore, concentration equals amount over volume. Very important. And that's why the normal serum creatinine concentration is anything less than 1.2. Let's say 0 0.7. 0 0.7 what? Amount over volume. Amount over volume. Milligrams per deciliter. Creatinine in your blood depends on your muscle mass, which depends on your age and sex. Creatinine is filtered and then partially secreted. This partial secretion makes it overestimates GFR by about 5 to 10 percent. You can program the computer to correct that 10 percent. Ergo, creatinine clearance is a good measure of your kidney function or your glomerular filtration rate. Very important concept creatinine clearance, i.e., the volume of plasma that got cleared of creatinine per unit time, is a rough estimate of your glomerular filtration rate, which is the volume filtered per unit time. Volume over time, volume over time. Both of these are volumes, but today's topic is serum creatinine. That's a concentration. If you want to learn more about creatinine clearance in the GFR, please check my previous videos. As for today, it's creatinine in the serum, and it's a concentration. Why is it important? Because it tells me about your kidney function. What's the normal glomerular filtration rate? Let's say 120. Okay, and then what? Then you deteriorate, 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 deteriorate. As I go from here to here, my kidney function gets poorer. So this is stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, stage five or end stage kidney disease or end stage renal failure. Stage four and five require dialysis because my kidneys are now toast. Where did creatinine come from? From creatine phosphate, which is a source of energy for the muscle. We talked about creatine kinase and creatine phosphate and the phosphagen system before. So creatine phosphate of my muscle will get metabolized into creatinine. Creatinine is now in the bloodstream and will end up being excreted by the kidney. Do we have any other organ that excretes creatinine? No, just your kidneys. That's why creatinine clearance is a good estimate of your kidney function. That's creatinine clearance. But if I talk about serum creatinine, i.e. the creatinine that's still in my blood, that is not excreted yet, it's inversely related to the kidney function. Translation. As my kidney function deteriorates and gets poorer, 
more creatinine will be left in the blood, i.e. not excreted. And this is a very important relation. Next, don't forget that creatinine depends on your muscle mass, which for the most part, for most people, day-to-day -day life, does not fluctuate that much. You cannot double your muscle mass overnight. It's not gonna happen. Don't forget that you have 620 skeletal muscles. Even if you train your biceps real hard today, it's still two biceps muscles, one on the left, one on the right, out of 620. So for the most part, normal people should have constant level of creatinine, almost constant. But what if I see acute sudden increase in serum creatinine over a 24-hour period? Think of severe muscle destruction like rhabdomyolysis, which can happen after a crush injury, like in a car accident or car crash. Moreover, bodybuilders who take creatinine supplements will have a falsely elevated creatinine in their blood, this does not mean that their kidney function is poor. It just means that they are taking creatinine from outside. And creatinine becometh creatinine. Serum creatinine is directly related to muscle mass. The more muscles I have, the higher my serum creatinine. But of course, this is theoretical. Why? Because if my muscle mass goes up, serum creatinine will go up. Yeah, but don't forget I have a robust kidney that should excrete that creatinine. So it should even out. The next one is very important. Serum creatinine is directly related to age. As I grow older and hopefully wiser, my kidney function deteriorates, which means less creatinine is excreted, which means more creatinine is left behind in the serum. As I grow older from age 20 to age 80, my serum creatinine goes up. Some basic math review. When you see a graph like this, it means there is a direct relationship between A and B. As you go from this point to this point on the x-axis, i.e. increasing, the y-axis is also increasing from this point to this point. Conversely, if I have an inverse relationship, it's going this way, not this way, and look at the relationship as I went from here to here, i.e. increase on the x-axis, the y-axis actually decreases. Now let's talk about the serum creatinine and the GFR relationship. First, look at the axes. What do we have here? GFR. And what do we have here? Serum creatinine concentration. Awesome. Now let's look at the shape of the graph or the curve. Do you think it looks more like the direct relationship or like the inverse relationship? It looks similar to the inverse relationship, however, it's non-linear. Since it's inverse, you can argue that as my GFR deteriorates, i.e. decreases, my serum creatinine increases. They are opposites. Opposites in a non-linear fashion. Why is this important? Look at the following disaster. Let's say that my kidney function, i.e. GFR, deteriorated and decreased from 120 to 60. My serum creatinine level at 120, which is a very healthy kidney, was within that reference range. But look what's going to happen when I deteriorate from 120 to 60. Wow, I lost half of kidney function. Still, the serum creatinine is within reference range, less than 1.2. Oh, so I can lose half of my kidney function. Yet still, my serum creatinine shows up as, quote, within reference range, unquote, in my lab report. Absolutely. That's why I need a good doctor in my life, not a doofus with a stethoscope. Blindly reading the lab report is useless. Lab reports have to be interpreted in light of patient's history, physical exam, other lab findings, previous lab findings, future lab findings, etc. So, GFR must drop below 50% of its normal value before the serum creatinine starts to go up and show up as abnormal. But wait, it gets even more interesting. Suppose that my kidney function deteriorated from 120 to 30. This is a loss of 75% or three quarters of my kidney function. I went from 100% to about 25%. Let's see what happened to my serum creatinine. Here my serum creatinine was normal and when I went to 30 my serum creatinine went to 2. So I went from 1 to 2. From 100% to 200%. Not the same as this. You see it's all about non-linearity. So do not say oh the patient's creatinine just went up from 1 to 1.5, no big deal. No, it's actually a very big deal when it comes to kidney function. Some words of wisdom, quote, doing 90% of what's required is one of the biggest wastes because you have nothing to show for all your efforts. 
but doing 110% of what's expected is one of the smartest investments because it can pay off with big reputation for just a little more effort. It's all about non-linearity, baby. That's why Dr. Thomas Sowell is my favorite economist. For the gazillionth time, we can use creatinine clearance to estimate your glomerular filtration rate, which help us estimate your kidney function. Now let's talk about today's topic, serum creatinine. What's the normal? Less than 1.2 milligrams per deciliter. That's in males. In females, it should be less than one. Why is that? Again, remember, males should have higher serum creatinine because they have more muscle mass on average because of testosterone. These values are true if you are an adult under 41. As you grow older and older and older, your serum creatinine increases. So serum creatinine increases with age, but decreases with muscle wasting. If you want to learn more about the equation for EGFR or estimated GFR, check out the previous video. It's just a reminder that you can use serum creatinine to estimate the GFR of the patient, which is an estimate of the kidney function. So creatinine clearance can be used to estimate GFR. Also serum creatinine can be used to estimate GFR. Serum creatinine increases in cases of too much protein intake. If I went to a buffet and I ate tons of meat, my serum creatinine will go up, not because my kidney function is poor, but because I'm overwhelming my body suddenly. Give me a few days and my serum creatinine should go back to normal. Next, vigorous exercise. Rhabdomyolysis can increase serum creatinine. If I'm taking creatinine supplements, they boost serum creatinine. If I'm taking growth hormone supplements or I have too much growth hormone before the closure of the epiphysis, gigantism, or after the fusion of the epiphyseal cartilage plate, acromegaly, all of these conditions will boost serum creatinine because they are related to muscle mass. Don't forget, why are we performing the serum creatinine test in the first place? To check my kidney function. So kidney diseases can increase serum creatinine big time, whether it's pre-renal azotemia, intra-renal azotemia, or post-renal azotemia, all of them will increase my serum creatinine. We'll talk about all of these in subsequent videos in my nephrology playlist. And last, some medications might elevate my serum creatinine, probably because they can decrease my kidney function. And these include ACE inhibitors, aminoglycosides, cephalosporins, these are antibiotics, and the heavy metal platinum-based chemotherapeutic agent known as cisplatin very toxic to the kidney, which means my kidney is unable to excrete creatinine, leaving more creatinine behind in the serum. Conversely, decreased serum creatinine could be seen in extremes of age, in the very young because they have less muscle, and in the very old because they have poorer kidney functions, or any condition of debilitation, anorexia, cachexia, muscle weakness, severe protein malnutrition, etc. In the next video, we shall talk about urea or blood urea nitrogen. You do not want to miss that. Quiz time. Here is a graph for you. And you have two straight lines, A and B. Which one represents urea and which one represents creatinine? Can you tell me the answer in the comment section? You'll find the answer key in the next video, whose name is blood urea nitrogen. If you want to learn more about the normal kidney function, the titratable acidity, the story of ammonia and ammonium and ammonium chloride and how it protects my kidney from damage. If you want to know about the proximal tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal tubule, the collecting ducts. If you want to learn about ADH, the urea back diffusion and the counter current multiplier, download my kidney physiology course at medicosisperfectionalist.com. Toxins can damage my kidney. Do you know how to recognize the most famous toxidromes in a patient? If not, download my toxicology course. Preeclampsia and eclampsia are diseases that can happen during pregnancy and can damage my kidneys. Learn about them by downloading my OBGYN high yields. And to learn about the role of the kidney and the lung in regulating my acid-base status, to learn about the serum anion gap, the serum osmolar gap, the stool osmolar gap, the urine anion gap, and much more, download my acid-base imbalance course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.